So if you could take a piece, we can we can start having the our event. So <clears throat> for those uh, who don't know me, my name is Fabio Bianco. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer of bio for dreams And today, along with our partners, uh, the uh, Erx Galeazzi, Land Lease, Milan and Partners, and Promos Italia, we would like to welcome you here for this uh, initial uh, gathering. Uh, we hope uh, to be the first one of many where we want to uh, start talking about uh, potential business opportunities and connection between our reciprocal ecosystem. Uh, so for, for starting this event, I would like to uh, give the word to Dr. Andrea Ruxto, who is the host here, and thank you very much. We're very happy to have you here today uh, in order to give us a welcome introduction. Thank you, Andrea. So thank you again from, from me and welcome. Uh, you're very lucky, it's a, it's a beautiful sunny day, so it's, uh, it, it's good, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's great to have you here. Um, so just a quick introduction for us. Um, you know, Lendlease is a, is a public company. We are uh, a real estate uh, developer. We're focused on large urban regenerations. And over the last few years, we've been really concentrating our activity uh, to bring forward initiatives like the one of Mind, where we try to work with different partners and bring together um, the uh, research, education, and innovation ecosystems. We do this with the last uh, component, which is the urbanization. So we feel and we believe that these type of environment and ecosystems are well positioned in cities, rather than probably till 10 years ago, we all thought about separated, uh, separate science park or business park. We feel that the future of these ecosystems are more integrated into cities. And so we combine the experience that we have in urban regeneration, uh, we have more than 100 billion euros project in urban regeneration ongoing today uh, with the experience of bringing, helping different partners to come together and collaborate. Uh, we have also launched uh, an initiative here called Federated Innovation, which is an alliance amongst different private companies to come together and collaborate to compete. So the idea of collaboration in innovation uh, that could be pre-market, it could be uh, different projects where we bring together the two, two new components of innovation, which is one is collaboration, not only in the same field, but amongst different knowledge domains. So the ability to collaborate with different companies that traditionally would have never worked together because they didn't have the opportunity. So combining this and creating a fast and efficient way to work together is what Federated Innovation is about. It's an entity created, so it's a self-standing, privately owned company that actually unite the different efforts of many organizations. We've got 35 companies and more than 500 that are collaborating into to this effort. Uh, the other key component of MIND, uh, which is, this is an example, it's an open infrastructure. So our main objective is to be an infrastructure of collaboration. So this is a place where we want people to come, people to work with and create networks and bridges between all Italy and beyond. So this is exactly uh, what is the vision of mine. So really helping creating this. And I'll take a couple of more minutes because I think it's important and related to you all is we're building a new city, a new city which is uh, looking at the future and we know you know, themes about sustainability, well-being, and you know, uh, health and security of people is is very important. So this is also a big opportunity to pilot some of the innovations and put them in practice. So it's not only a project um, that is is looking for the future, but it's really a, a test bed for many of these initiatives to really come to reality very early on. And so this is an opportunity for us to 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 offer also this infrastructure for experimentations, for pilot, for, for any of the ideas to come to reality, which is also a way to accelerate uh, innovation. Uh, and the human and is at the center of what we do here. So the idea is a place that can help humans to live better. And that clearly unites the 
physical component of a place, the way we work, the way we collaborate with the health and the future of health, and, and, and that is united by the principle of finding a scientific solutions for improvement of the quality of life. That's all about mine. So welcome again, and, and I'll give back to Fabio. Thank you, Thank you very much, and in order to, to have a, um, a further boost into our uh, journey today, uh, we also have a welcome uh, uh, message from the Ministry of Economic Development in Poland. So I would like to ask please to, to share the video with us. Hello everyone, my name is Lucia Stromecka and I am Deputy Director in the Investment Development Department in the Polish uh, Ministry of Economic Development and Technology. Our main goal would be to consider this first opportunity to create a positive synergy among the different stakeholders of innovation life in New Milano Innovation District and the entrepreneur, scientific and academic environment in Poland with the goal of boosting innovation opportunities and fostering transborder cooperation. Moreover, the upcoming meeting will be held in Poland and we would gather a network of Italian entrepreneur partners and meeting Polish companies. And, uh, thank you very much and we will have uh, uh, the opportunity today to talk about these upcoming events uh, in Poland and the way we want to organize uh, a synergy, an operative synergy between our ecosystem. So um, again, thank you very much for being here and let's start with, uh, uh, with the program today. And I'm going to try to be very brief with you in, uh, in my presentation. I just want to share a couple of concepts on uh, why do we want to really, as bio for dreams open a, a, an innovation gateway uh, towards uh, uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, if I could have my slides, please. The idea is that um, we want to uh, create a critical mass sufficiently interesting to attract the market. So uh, in the idea of opening an innovation gateway to Eastern Europe, let's start from the basics and let's start to understand what does really innovation mean? Because innovation is a, a key word that means renew, it means improve, it means replacing products or services. But innovation is really a big mess. And the best way I have to, to think about innovation is, is something like this. So when you look at this picture, you can imagine that the market is the sea. And sometimes it goes up and sometimes it goes down. Uh, the industry, the established industry, is the big boat, right? Uh, sometimes when the waves go down, some containers may fall, but it's very difficult that the boat some, uh, uh, gets really messed up because at the end of the day, it's big, it's strong enough, it can manage certain waves. That's not true for the startups and for the innovative ecosystem, which, by the way, has some very interesting topics on, on their hand. On one side, they're fast, they move quickly, they can change direction according to the waves. But most importantly, they can, if they connect with the industry, drive the direction of the big boat. And that's what really innovation is all about, is the idea of connecting the right innovation with the industry in order to bring something new onto the market. So if you look at it that way, everything should be about matching up innovation with companies. And in fact, if you talk with the, with the C executives of the major companies, they would say that more than 90% of their future revenue will come from acquiring innovation from small companies. So the game is easy, right? Well, it's not really like that because uh, finding the right innovation is very difficult for everybody. It's difficult for the industry because it's difficult to select the right project. And at the end of the day, the projects of innovations are so complex that many times it's really a lottery ticket what they get. And it could be a good one, it could be a bad one, but they don't know. So it's complicated to find and filter the right innovation. And on the startup level, it's even more complicated because startups don't have a clue of what they're doing. And I'm saying that as a former startupper. 
Because if you look at the top reason why some startup initiative fail, about 40% of startups are dead because they're not meeting a market need. It means they're developing something that it's not needed. Now, wouldn't it be nice to have this early connection between the real needs of the market and the power and the passion of the startup ecosystem in order to make something that makes sense? And that's really what it's all about. This is what is happening, not only in Italy, but I think in most of the Eastern European countries, where on one side, you have the research centers, the universities, the producers of innovation, which are represented here by those little cars. And on the other side, you have the market. The problem is that this innovation comes to the task of technology transfer offices too early. And that's a mismatch because when they talk with venture capitals, they're always too early. When they talk with accelerators, they're never on the right one. So it's complicated to make that match. And that's exactly what we're trying to do at bio for dreams We're trying to connect those dots and create an ecosystem where you can bridge this towards a time in the development of the company when they're getting a bit closer to the industry, possibly working jointly with the industry in order to get that product out there. And this is truly about collaboration, which what you were mentioning before. So what we're doing is we're supporting these companies with all types of uh, uh, activities, technological, uh, managerial, and, and, and all type of uh, strategic uh, competences needed with a hands-on approach onto this project. And we also do investment when the investment that we do for these companies is a little bit more than just the money. It's a networking, it's speeding up the project, it's connecting the project to the right ecosystems. But more than that, we're trying to bridge the gap. And we do that with some... Uh, innovative approaches, I would say. On one side, from the infrastructural standpoint, we are developing shared laboratories. The main one are going to be right there next door in, in, in the building that is currently being developed here at MIND. And the MIND share labs will be an element for these startups to find an ecosystem where they can get the laboratory they need when they need it. it doesn't make sense for startups to spend money on infrastructure. What they need to spend money on is developing their products and they need to find the right instrumentation and the right technologies and the right expertise ready for them to use it when they need it. That's all about the Mindshare Labs. And on the other side, the possibility of talking with the right people. So we have developed if these things go further, oh. aha, two further. Great, thank you. On the other side, we have developed Innovation Circle. Innovation Circle is a round table which is partnering up with Federated Innovation here in mind in order to bring the stakeholders of the industry together, discuss on specific projects of interest, not only doing the gap analysis, but only also saying what you can do in order to develop those projects. And as you can see on the other side, there are research partners, among which the Jagiellonian University of Krakow, which is a, a crucial element for the development of the ecosystem. Universities are not just producers of innovation. They have expertise, they have facilities that can be used to foster this private public a partnership in order to boost those projects forward. And we would like to create this ecosystem throughout the Italy and throughout the different places where we're at. Currently, Bio4Dreams has 12 sites in Italy and we will soon connect with Barbara in Trieste. Trieste is our main uh, hub for the whole expansion in the Eastern area. But as you can see also, we are present in different parts and you see that Krakow is still in red because uh, I still haven't talked with Lucas, but aside from that, uh, we are expanding in an area where we want to create this connection. We want to connect the dots in order to have each ecosystem develop and bring forward the right innovation. And uh, by the way, we have recently signed an agreement for opening up an operative site in Pennsylvania because those projects that really make sense and are at the right stage of development, they need to go and play the games where they really can. And we have successful stories of that in Italy so far. I would like to expand that further. Okay, with that said, I leave the word to Barbara at the Urban Center. The Urban Center of Trieste for us is a really important place. So I would like her to, to let you know a little bit about what we're doing there in order to develop this uh, international connection in Eastern Europe. Barbara, good morning. Good morning. I don't know if I can share also the my video in order to uh, 
to uh, hear to, your voice at the moment. So that's just, okay. Just the voice <laughs> could be in. enough. So thank you, Fabio, for the introduction and uh, welcome uh, to Trieste, the city of science. Um, there are several reasons uh, for this title that uh, we are honored to, uh, to have. Uh, and uh, one of them is that uh, we are really international with more than 30 research centers and over 10,000 researchers from all over the world that work here, mainly in, on the light science and digital sector. Um, the result is also the high quality of science uh, that uh, I light, is highlighted by the um, uh, high density of startup here uh, in the city. And the, the, um, the density is uh, one of the highest uh, at the Italian level. Such uh, uh, an innovation attitude uh, also pushed uh, the um, Friuli Venezia Giulia region, so where uh, Trieste is the capital of, to the level of a strong innovator in Europe. Last but not least, uh, in 2020, uh, Trieste hosted also the European Science Open Forum, and uh, we were honored by the title of uh, European City of Science. Next, please. Next slide. Uh, just a second, Barbara. Okay, I'm having, sorry. I'm having a funny game here <laughs> with the presentation. Let me try that again. Okay, yep. this is for you. Thank you very much. So here, this is like a, a messy slide, but uh, you can appreciate the comprehensive ecosystem that we have here uh, in our territory. So from the research center, uh, that uh, is uh, one of the uh, main places uh, where innovation is generated, to the financial and also the industrial players uh, that bring the innovation that uh, we are working on here to the market that is the main goal of the, um, the industry and the financial partner and also to the final user to, so to uh, better to have uh, a better and um, uh, better lifestyle and uh, wellness uh, to the final um, population so to the to the population so uh, this is the scenario where the municipality of Trieste has invested more than uh, 4 million euro in a new innovation center is uh, really in the center of the city and the main goal uh, is to host the chain of innovation of the Friuli Venezia Giulia and uh, the um, and the region allowing all the actors playing together so this is the urban center of Trieste uh, next please again we have an issue yeah with I'm waiting no easy. problem <laughs> No, definitely not working well. Potete della regia farlo andare avanti per piacere. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, this is urban center of Trieste. So it's positioned as an international hub. Uh, in Trieste, we are used to be international since our uh, our foundation. So it's um, it's defined by three well um, well defined keywords. So innovation, entrepreneurship, and contamination. And all these activities are performed in two specific sectors. So it's a vertical innovation center: bio high tech and digital high tech. Next, please. We try. Thank you very much. So the project is developed on three macro areas that correspond to the three floors of the building. On the ground floor, we found we find that the Fab Lab, the fabrication laboratory, that is the really the maker's house. And you can see also the maker can be very, very young because uh, we would like to introduce science in the early phase of the education. On the first floor, the, all the actors of the innovation actively interact each other with the result of idea contamination. This is the goal of the floor. This is the goal of these um, areas. Like meeting, workshop, also hackathon and networking are uh, instruments that, that we 
daily use here in urban center to boost relation and also to foster business creation. So the result of this value generation can have the startup shape. So we would like to follow all the path to the startup creation and company will be hosted on the second floor of the building. So next and the final slide. Thank you. So this is really a short introduction to what is the ecosystem of Trieste on the border of the Italian uh, territory. And I really hope to host you soon here in Trieste at the Urban Center. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. And uh, what I really like, and we really wanted to have this connection because uh, uh, we feel that uh, by connecting these uh, major hubs like Milano, Trieste, and uh, what you are representing in Poland, we really can get this innovation going and somehow uh, landing on the market. One of the things that I like very much about what is happening in Trieste, which, by the way, is happening here at Mind as well, is the engagement with society. Uh, it's not enough just to have good scientists talk with good industry. It's also important to communicate to the population with different programs, it could be kids, it could be uh, other social events, it could be more engagement with the, eco uh, with the local ecosystem, what science is doing, what innovation is doing. This is going to become key in the creation of a community. Talking about community, I would like to welcome Olympia Vaccarino Aureli, who is the head of partnerships for Milan and Partners and the city of Milano. So Olympia, thank you for being here. Now we are landing back to Milano and we're going to tell you what's going on here in our ecosystem. First of all, thank you, Fabio, for organizing uh, such a stimulating uh, day. And thank you, Andrea and Landlis, uh, to hosting us in this site, which is uh, a milestone project for the municipality. I will wait for my slide as well. OK, cool. So what I do represent, what is Milan and Partners? First of all, very briefly, we were created by the mayor of Milan and the Chamber of Commerce to promote the municipality of Milan abroad. Uh, our main goal is the one of making Milano visible for international investors, for tourists, and for international talents. So we work on these three drivers because we do believe that Milano can still be at the forefront of the driving for innovation in Italy in the world and Europe. So our governance, we are a public association founded by two public entities, as I said, which is the municipality on one side and the Chamber of Commerce on the other side. But we, our model is the one of engaging the private industry and sector to make us enable at least to get the resources in terms also of competencies and uh, tools to get our uh, targets. So our partners, uh, and um, I can also maybe anticipate that we will be very happy to have Landlis uh, as a representative of mine among our governors soon, are the one that make us this project of mine, another project in the city, very visible and strengthened. So uh, it's beautiful that we spoke about um, the urban center in uh, Trieste as well, but let me just say a few words about why you're here and what is uh, Milano and what Italy represents for the life science industry. So we decided, uh, and the government of Italy decided to hugely and massively invest in this project, not because it was just a piece of land, but because there is an ecosystem as it existing which is among the most competitive one. Hello, <laughs> Stefano. Uh, Italy is the third economy in terms uh, of manufacturing and specifically is the first producer for pharma. Uh, all, let's say, the production that has been done in the ecosystem and the region counts for 10% of the Italian GDP. So even if we look at the micro data in terms of the hospital present in the city, so we have over 200 and 50 hospitals across the region and the value produced by the industry, you see that we are the most, most competitive region European-wise. Um, we do believe that numbers and figures that just not count for the economics in terms of the industry, but there are some added values that are represented by, for instance, the level and the quality of our researchers and the universities that are based here in the city are 11, and we have excellences among them, uh, specifically working 
working on the biotechnologies, pharma, and medical studies, which is also something very important. Overall, let's say the number of students that are hosted by the city is more than 200,000 students, 10% of which are international students, and we really do aim to make these number growing in terms of attraction for talents and not just companies. Um, what are the sectors we decided to focus on? So life sciences and agri-food tech are certainly one of our, let's say, pillars when we, we want to promote the city as a landing opportunities for foreign investment. And the reason is the one that I was explaining to you before. So these are the figures of the performance and the numbers but the same could be also applicable to the agri-food tech. So um, why Milano is so competitive in terms of also turnover, we have over 5 million turnover for the agri-food tech, which is 25% uh, of all the Italy turnover uh, for, for the sector. And at the same time, uh, there is a, a, a policy framework that is making, making this industry really able to proceed faster. So you're here today in a construction site, but just close your eyes and go back to five years ago. Here there was a word exhibition that was called Expo Milano 2015. And the main topic was related to food policy and uh, let's say life sciences uh, industry. And this is why also the Italian government decided to invest 5 billion euros for the development of the human technical and for the development of an ecosystem which was focused on life sciences. But the World Organization like uh, FAO and uh, the United Nations came here in this place where we are here today just to decide to put some, uh, let's say, pillars and milestones for the development of common policies for life sciences and especially agri-food. So there is also, let's say, a romantic meaning of building this site here. Again, I think it's blocked. If you can move forward the slide for me. Okay. I think it needs to take a pause from that. Okay, there, there we go. So um, focusing on uh, specifically the life science industry, I, will, I wanted just to present you some numbers and figures related to the precision medicine. So um, the biotech uh, uh, products that are currently, let's say, produced every year are over 300 new products every year with uh, uh, an investment of over 700 million. Uh, which makes actually the region at the forefront also for a certain type uh, of uh, researches on precision medicine, which for instance are the CAR T technologies and uh, cancer therapies. Um, I think that on this maybe uh, Professor Banthi also will uh, go a little bit more in details about what is happening in that white building that you see just across the street. And then, can you move forward again for me? Okay, no, next slide. No, no. Okay, so anyway, I, I will continue without the slide, it's fine. So, so our model, how we are working actually, as we said, we are a public association. So what we do, we assist foreign companies, when, first of all, in letting them understanding what are the uh, specific value of the ecosystem. So we present them the data, but we present them the opportunities. Mind is for sure one of the first opportunities we are actually presenting to them. Um, and as I said, we have partners like uh, Landly's and Biofer Dreams, but 
we also work with a number of incubators and accelerators and also initiatives uh, um, provided by private companies. Open Zone is an example of uh, incubating hub, which is, let's say, um, promoted by a single pharma company, which is Zambon Group. And so far, we also work with uh, other universities like the University of Milano Fondazione Unimi and the Polyhub that they, they have their own uh, small labs. So once we identify, let's say, the opportunity, the right opportunity for the investing company, we provide a number of services completely free of charge that counts upon our network of partners and institutional partners. So we are partner of Invitalia, which is uh, the national agency for incentives. We are partner with uh, the Italian Trade Agency, which is the agency located in various places across the world to identify the lead. And we also have private, let's say, stakeholders, external consultants that are the one that are helping us identifying opportunities for investment. Um, since we have a huge community and we represent the public entity, this is just an example. Um, we are not obviously just focusing on the life science. We work on a number of fields, including fintech, including ICT, including cybersecurity, fashion and design, which are the core expertise of the city. But we count on those number of the ecosystem to make uh, the company really able to get a sip and the zest of what the city offers to it. And the, what concern, let's say, our participation to international events, we always want to be present at the main, let's say, events for the industry because not just to represent the city, but also to enable the investors and the companies that are thinking about their decision to move into Milano to be visible at international first and get the potential of our network. Um, we worked uh, since, uh, let's say, we started in 2020, which was an amazing here to start this activity and uh, we successfully identified across the industry 152 projects that are divided uh, in the life sciences uh, sector and the agri food tech uh, and uh, fintech mainly um, and these are also let's say the countries of uh, origin of the companies that we identify so we we're working hugely with the us we work with canada we work with uh, uh, germany the uk and uh, some other other region of Europe, but of course we would be very much happy to get a stronger connection with other European countries that are active in the sector, including of course Poland. Um, in terms of fiscal incentives, I will leave the floor to my colleague Elisabetta Botta, who is the expert, because the model of our networks work uh, in connecting the company with the expert without charging, of course, any, any fee, as I said before. But to get the best quality of service and to get the real, the key to access the city as the fastest as the company can. Thank you, Olympia. Uh, yes, part of our services com uh, are comprehensive of uh, assessing and providing information on the kind of fiscal incentives that you can access to, both at the national and regional level. Uh, so. Currently, Italy boasts a very favorable package of fiscal incentives for uh, innovative startups and company. Um, especially, we try to um, uh, list a, a short list of the main ones that could interest uh, startups like, like yours. Uh, for instance, if you incorporate in Italy as an innovative startup, so you meet these requirements, you can access to uh, some tax deduction, flexible employment schemes but what I think it's very very interesting if you're looking forward like for instance raising funds is the fact that um, investors so both companies and uh, physical persons investing in uh, innovative startups can get a tax reduction of 50% on their uh, investment uh, so you can really leverage on this status to raise funds here in Italy and also uh, if you're an innovative startup you can also access to tools like uh, Smart and Start Italia, which is an interest-free loan uh, covering up to 80% uh, of the eligible expenses for the growth and uh, um, R&D development of your business. 
uh, for expenses uh, among uh, 1,000 uh, euro, uh, 100,000 euros, and 1.5 million. And um, let's see, okay, it worked. And also you have a large number of incentives, uh, again, both at the national and uh, regional level, supporting especially young entrepreneurship and the purchasing of uh, innovative uh, uh, designs, patents, uh, and um, of course, the, the growth of young uh, businesses, uh, which comes both in uh, capital grants, but also in uh, fiscal deductibility tools, uh, and so on. Um, one interesting thing is also the fact that Italy is really uh, working on the attraction of foreign talents and uh, on retaining uh, its talent abroad. So, for instance, uh, if your company employs people under the age of 35, of 30, um, you're granted a, a tax reduction of 3,000 euros per year on each, each of these person you hire, but also um, you can, uh, uh, if if you uh, want to um, come back to, if you're an Italian uh, who have lived abroad for more than one year and uh, you want to return to Italy or you're a, a foreign individual uh, running a startup that wants to come to Italy, you will get a 70% reduction on your income taxes, which is a lot, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, and of course, there are... Uh, more incentives available uh, and we as Olympia was saying we partner with Invitalia uh, which is the agency in charge of allocating these fiscal incentives so we can provide to every company we assist a very customized and bespoke um, assistance on the kind of incentives they can access to, how much they can access to, and also support in the application process. Uh, and of course, as you might know, Italy will be uh, one of the largest recipients for from um, for EU funds from the uh, EU Next Generation funds together with Spain. Uh, so we're really eager to 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 see uh, what kind of uh, further incentives will be available uh, very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Since we won't be able to stay with you all the day, maybe I will leave, uh, me and Elisabetta will leave our contacts there and business cards, so if the company has any specific question for us, we can directly reach us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, yeah, I guess it's a good moment for being in Italy, uh, but it's uh, also a very good moment for being at mine. So Stefano, please tell us why. <laughs> Thanks very much, Fabio. Uh, first of all, it's a privilege and a, and, and a honor to, 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 to host you today and, and having you here, um, understanding a bit more about our, our project, MIND. Um, it's great to, to do it in person, <laughs> I should say, and uh, not to do it from, from, from a screen. Um, so let me just give you a bit of a context of what is the area stands for and what, are the, uh, the, the, what is the purpose and what are the, the objectives that we're trying to seek. Um, this is an area that, as, as Olympia was referring to, has a huge material legacy. This is a place where in 2015, over 20 million people have been visiting Expo. And this is a place that to some extent show that Milan is an ecosystem and Italy can deliver value through large events and through urban regeneration. Um, the story from there to, to, to today is a story of an urban regeneration that is funded on a public-private partnership uh, that is the largest PPP scheme in real estate in Italy. Uh, it's funded on a uh, public uh, sector organization at Expo that owns the land and that decides to appoint an international uh, property developer, Land Lease, which is our company, um, as the uh, private developer to take care of creating an ecosystem uh, focused on life science, centered on life science, and on developing a corner of the city. So this is like the, the two-tier uh, approach that that was, uh, that was set out set out from uh, from the beginning. Um, of course, when it comes to developing an uh, an ecosystem, the opportunities were plenty. Um, you know, as 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 the the the, the, uh, the Olympia and others just said, that there is a huge opportunity there, uh, stemming from the region, stemming from the huge amount of research that comes from universities 
diversity and from the vibrancy of the SMEs and the, and the large corporates that are uh, that are on site. And there are a bunch of uh, excellencies already on site. The, the, the Galeazzi Hospital uh, that, that Giuseppe will describe in a bit, Human Technopole, and uh, in, in due course in the next four or five years, um, Università Statale di Milano. So, you know, the 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 the, the, uh, the framework is there what we did in that in that direction was to create and patent uh, a model for innovation called federated innovation which is pretty strange for a uh, real estate developer a property developer to start coming up with this crazy idea of you know inventing a new model for uh, for for innovation and to and to put innovation on on the ground we did it because because we we felt like we needed to develop and accelerate the development of the site even before the physical space could uh, could could take place and so you know back in uh, the spring of 2020 you know it was really a tough time but also a time for reflection uh, we had a lot of time on our side in staying staying at home confined we came up with this concept and we uh, and we sort of um, formalized this concept later company could um, could work and could uh, generate innovation so it's uh, this this federate innovation uh, system the multi uh, sort of layer model whereby there are leaders um, thematic area leaders on top of the uh, of, of the ecosystem that essentially steer and drive the federal agenda on specific on specific topics i.e the city of the future and uh, and the life science uh, more uh, more broadly so on, on life science uh, uh, there are a number of companies like novartis or or Baco, here company that decided to uh, come here and steer the ecosystem uh, from a private sector and to uh, develop partnerships with uh, with the uh, components the the the, the anchor on site and with uh, a bunch of other stakeholders including bio for dreams that are uh, that are already on site <laughs> as we as we as we are speaking as we're speaking um the is, is is growing um constantly and actually what we we, we managed to this is success specifically for us uh in land lease um it, it was successful let, let me just get into the the slide that describes that um so this is the model of federated innovation um that I, i've described very briefly it's successful for us because we started from scratch uh, we patented this concept and now we have over 30 companies uh, some of which may be your suppliers some of which may be your clients so you know companies are very let's say um, large enough to 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 want it to do this even before the, uh, the the official start of the of the site in, in its physical they invested uh, on uh, on the growth of the ecosystem and now land lease is just a, a player amongst amongst the others so you know th this system works because actually more companies believe in that and this is a recurring thread you know of, of you know, and of startups it's not just a single company believing in that it's like a group uh, and a coalition of uh, of first mover that decided to to move uh, to the site and to create that uh, that ecosystem as you can see there are two main uh, focuses one is the city of the future with sort of green tech fin uh, agri food and energy for example and then there is the area of life sciences and healthcare uh, that accounts for a a good number of interesting interesting company to play with so the first opportunity that i see for uh for this forum is to um start interacting in a more deeper sense with these companies and with the, the wider uh if we can come back to the previous slide the clicker seems to you know have taken a, a friday off <laughs> today <laughs> anyway there is the it's not just about this thematic the, the, each thematic area has um a a group of companies that they are uh at uh, and a group of uh, projects, the so-called layer three uh, projects. Accessing this project and accessing the business community is free of charge and non-binding. So the opportunity there is to show yourself as a uh, as a um, startup, as a company, as a as a as a partner institution, and being uh, and propose projects to these companies. And on the other hand, to be to be seen by this company as one of the candidates to 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 run projects. So there is this push and pull mechanism whereby um, each company, each organization can access um, free of charge. 
and free of let's say also frills uh, to be able to, uh, to to implement activities and projects uh, in specific in specific areas the areas where we are working towards specifically are uh, precision medicine uh, and, and in general, looking at the, the role of data to uh, to get into uh, a more, let's say, customized and, and personalized uh, and personalized medicine, and uh, for to some extent also the interaction between uh, the urban environment and uh, and the topic of medicine. So multiplying the touch points between uh, between let's say life science companies and and uh, and the the practical uh, the, the practicality of living or living in a city. And you know we feel that Bio for Dream is playing a very interesting role in 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 merging this in 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 joining this this ecosystem and actually acting as our main main interface in, in into this. The other key area of uh, of of work that that Landlis has done is more associated with the core business, which is developing a side a, a part of the city. If you can come back just to the slide with the map, it seems like. I'm stuck with a little bit, but I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> explain it nonetheless. Um, the other uh, the other the other topic that we that we looked specifically, there's a slide with the master plan. The, 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 stop there! Stop there! Fantastic. So the uh, the, the the work that we also have done uh, was to develop uh, an, an innovation district um, so a proper stemming from this public private partnership um, that has uh, in order in order to create a space for innovation to uh, to take place so we created the ecosystem and we wanted to create also the physical space um, I think the added value of this of this work was that is that we are putting the innovation district to a different scale, to an urban scale. So uh, we feel that uh, innovation districts could no longer be simply a bunch of buildings in a not so interesting setting where people don't really want to live. Um, and I'm making something, uh, and I'm making something a bit provocative. Silicon Valley is arguably one of those places. A, a huge amount of innovation, a huge amount of technology is being developed. But actually, if you go there, well, it's not that nice, you know. And the prices of how are uh, are difficult to to to, to achieve. Uh, mobility is a challenge. You know, you, you meet cool people, but boy, it's hard. Um, we wanted to flip. <laughs> we wanted to flip the script in, in, into that, and actually starting uh, from uh, a, a more um, let's say a, a palatable and, and accessible and exciting place to uh, to go and live uh, and work and, and and create and create value. So uh, the idea starting from uh, regenerating uh, the area of, uh, of Expo, leveraging what was already here, um, the Decumano, which is this big, big sort of avenue that you see here that will be transforming the longest linear park in, uh, in Europe, reusing the canal and the waterways that are all scattered around here. And I invite you, as you, as you go out, to have a look at the end of this, this small building. There is a, a pond where there are big birds you know, living here, and it's, it's, it's nice. Because you know, you, you get this sort of serendipity moment. You, you get new ideas. You had researchers getting out of their sort of lab where they do deep tech discoveries and actually seeing, you know, lilies and a nice, a nice pond of water. And we feel that this is an integral part of, of creating an innovation district. Um, and then we started with creating the spaces for uh, for this to for this um, innovation to to take place. We started from the village, which is uh, a small sort of development that is here. The aims to be the proof of concept of what we are uh, what we are delivering it's uh, an area for around a thousand people uh, that will come and and sort of inhabit be the pioneer of uh, of the site that will include a number of interesting companies that have seen federated innovation and wanted to get a physical space in here or are simply interested to uh, set the their space because they see value in in this and again i feel bio for dream again at the at the, at, the, at the core of this uh, of this part, because they are moving their headquarters uh, here and are actually providing a service that we feel is very useful for for the community, which is providing um, services uh, to the the startup and the SMEs uh, that will want to develop technologies in biotech, both in terms of advisory and in terms of labs. This is something that we, as property developer, will never have uh, the capabilities to do because it's a very you know, sectorial uh, knowledge that you know that that. 
with Biofor Dreams, we feel we found the right the right partner to uh, to, to come on site. It's not just Biofor Dreams. There is also AstraZeneca uh, that will move here their um, Italian headquarters. Uh, taking, uh, um, say, large part of the uh, of uh, of the village, and and Rold, uh, which is a, a mechatronic company uh, that has their headquarter. 10 miles from here, 10, uh, 15 kilometers from here, but decided to put their innovation uh, department here. Why? Because they felt that you know innovation needs to sparkle from exchanging of ideas, and they found this as being the first place where the, the best place where um, where where this exchange of idea could place more more sort of uh, potential tenants. Some of them are actually pretty exciting. Will will come will come will be announced uh, later later in the year, and you know they started to make sense. Even you know if you come here is mainly a construction site, you start seeing why there are you know, interesting and exciting companies that decided to come to come here and to validate our, our idea. The next big wave will be uh, just after the completion of Galeazzi, uh, Galeazzi Hospital um, that is forecast uh, in the second half of 2022. And it's called the Westgate. Uh, this is where Lend Lease will deploy its best sort of um, what, 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 what we can do at our best. It's an urban district uh, that will include a residential area uh, dedicated to a researcher, uh, but also to other people that will want to leave the area, a hotel, offices, labs, uh, and a, a set of facilities facilitated by what we call the common ground. Um, we really feel that innovation sparkles from having a good company, having, having good people to, to spend time with. So we need good coffee and we need a good place to, to have to have chat so rather than going with very high-rise building we wanted to have a compact set of building uh, with a vibrant common ground where people could meet could interact and could and could talk um, now this is a, a vision but we are achieving building permits uh, we are now starting the, the construction as you see there are big excavator excavating uh, today so this is like the main the main construction job and again to validate the idea um, earlier in the year in at the end of June we found a big investor uh, called CPPIB, a uh, pension fund that decided to uh, in, co invest with Lend Lease 200 million euros each to go and, and, and fund the development of, of this area. So again, there is a second validation and this crazy idea of you know coming up with this innovation district at an urban scale actually start to make sense all of, all, all, all of a sudden. So um, just to a final a final note what, what you are going to see here uh, it's in the next few weeks the opportunity for uh, to come and play in the village and to you know to start having an opportunity to to interact with the companies that i told you and all the federated innovation company that will have their own sort of um signpost here and and an opening and an opening area and then more in a broad sense to uh, enjoy the opportunity to mix an urban district with uh, with innovation. This is the best challenge that we are that we are facing now, and I think it's a very it's a very exciting one. Let me just go with a very quick quick remark on also why we're doing this. I was earlier in the week I was at COP26, and that was an, an eye opener on on many of the challenges that we are uh, that we are facing. I feel that together uh, with with life science, the the tackling the urban uh, challenges of decarbonization is probably our our challenges for the twenties, um, and so. Our agenda is not just on developing the best, uh, tech, attracting the best companies in uh, uh, in life science, but also coming up with a interesting and exciting response for all the people that will come here in terms of decarbonization. What I mean by that is, uh, for example, that we are um, guaranteeing that 100% of the electricity, energy that is consumed on site will come from green sources. And that means inventing completely a heating and cooling system uh, that is digitally driven and only and nurtures from the water uh, that is on site to get top quality energy specifications for for the building um, but also to make strong decisions to make buildings more expensive but also more uh, more resilient to the challenges that we have uh, ahead of us um, or we are thinking uh, of buildings that will be made in timber so you will see in here the first in Italy uh, high-rise office building made of timber. Uh, what do we do in timber? Uh, because if you think construct uh, reinforced concrete generates and emit concrete uh, emit CO2 as we produce, 
if we do timber and of course we commit to replant the trees then these trees sequestrate the carbon and so you know become you know a, a reverse the, uh, the the scheme the scheme onto that or even from a mobility perspective um the site will be completely car free so there will be parking just outside the site uh, for people that, that still want to access the, 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 the site by car. But actually, this, the entire site will be completely walkable and pedestrian first, let's put it like that, uh, with opportunity for taxi and disabled and, and, and a bunch of categories to be able to, to access. But this, again, brings to the third area, you know, buildings, energy and mobility, the, 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 three, the three key uh, areas that we, that we see as in our agenda of, uh, of decarbonization. This is not just because it is cool to do it, this is not just because, you know, at some point we will be requested to do it, but also because we want people to be here and feel confident that, you know, the people that will come and leave the site and operate the site and, 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 and spend their time will be on a site that is progressive also on this agenda that is, that is I feel incredibly, incredibly pressing and incredibly, uh, you know, strategic for uh, for everyone. So, you know, very much I will welcome welcome you here in any shape or form through Federated Innovation, through your willingness to to come and and, and set your camp in here, um, and we are welcoming you today on this exciting project. Thank you, Stefano. And you know, it's funny because for those of you who came here at Expo. It must have been a shock today like it was for me a couple of years ago when I arrived here to find uh, um, something a little bit more than a desert here. But, uh, but now, every, every day that we come, we see developments ongoing. We see things that are moving. And now it was not only just operational structure and building and, 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 and activities going on, but we start having a community. We already have one year of meetings with the tenants uh, that are uh, working together in order to create something new. And there is this freshness of, of new things, which is a, a real passion that is driving us, and we really look forward to have this ecosystem working. There's only one thing that, that was not correct in your presentation, uh, Stefano, because you mentioned the fact that we have a very nice urban district with all these little small buildings and we're sitting next door to a 12-story 12, 12 huge new iconic thing here, uh, which is becoming an ex a center of, uh, of excellence for us and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, an element of pride. So I would like uh, Dr. Banfi, the, 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 the scientific director of the hospital, Galeazzi, tell us what is happening here, which is going to be a really important step for the development of mine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, it is a, a real pleasure for me to uh, to meet you because I ju just a memory, personal memory, because I started to collaborate, cooperate with a, a Polish uh, scientist uh, about uh, 15 years ago uh, when I was in uh, the physician team, our rugby national team. And uh, we started a cooperation with uh, Polish scientists because uh, the team uh, was uh, treated in a spa uh, center for the whole body cryotherapy because the Irish team, uh, which uh, defeated us uh, uh, just uh, two months uh, uh, before this, uh, this travel, uh, was uh, served in. Uh, in, uh, in this uh, uh, special center. Then I continued uh, the collaboration with uh, some scientists in uh, Szczecin, in uh, Gdansk, in uh, Krakow, in Warsaw, and uh, until uh, one of my collaborators, Giovanni Lombardi, uh, became a professor in uh, a Polish university. Then uh, we have a, a, a real and a solid tradition of uh, cooperation with uh, with Poland and uh, I pers personally I'm involved for for example as a reviewer of uh, your national grant system and uh, I was impressed by the efficiency of uh, uh, your university your ac academic uh, procedures uh, and also uh, I was uh, impressed by the efficiency of uh, the EU uh, national, uh, national grant system. Then uh, I, would, uh, uh, I would continue, obviously, this cooperation. And uh, now, for example, we are presenting uh, some uh, European uh, project, project for European grants, and uh, uh, we are uh, among the network uh, uh, Polish uh, 
Polish uh, Academy. I'm uh, the scientific director of uh, Galeazzi. In the, Galeazzi is uh, uh, an hospital, uh, or mainly uh, an orthopedic hospital. And uh, the new Galeazzi is uh, just uh, in front of you. Uh, and uh, this uh, hospital will be released uh, in, uh, in the spring of uh, the new year, the next year. And uh, we will move uh, uh, to the, the, this building in uh, summer of uh, the next year. And uh, I would uh, briefly present, uh, show you the, uh, the some some data of uh, some data of uh, our research. Uh, no, no, non andate avanti, però. Tornate la prima, per favore. Grazie. La seconda. Ok, grazie. Eh, the Galeazzi Hospital is the leading hospital of, uh, for orthopedic sciences in our, uh, in our country. It is, uh, for example, the first hospital for hip and knee uh, joint replacement. It is the first hospital for vertebral surgery. Uh, thus, uh, our activity is a hectic activity for uh, for clinics and uh, it, Galeazzi is uh, in Milano uh, but it is a national hospital, it is a national wide hospital because uh, about 40-45% 40, of uh, patients uh, are becoming from uh, uh, some other region of, uh, of the Italy. And uh, Galeazzi is a uh, a leading hospital for uh, orthopedic sciences, and uh, we have also uh, uh, we uh, we are also accredited by uh, by our for uh, orthopedic sciences for research. Uh, then we have a, a research activity in uh, mainly in uh, orthopedic sciences. Uh, we have also uh, an agreement with the University of uh, Milano. Uh, thus, uh, the Galeazzi Hospital is also a teaching hospital. And uh, now we have also some uh, agreements with uh, some other university in, uh, in our city for engineering and uh, for some other um, research areas, for example, for informatics. Uh, we are producing a big uh, quantity uh, and a heavy quantity of uh, uh, scientific uh, papers and uh, this is uh, our impact factor uh, in uh, the last years and uh, uh, in uh, 2021 uh, we will uh, have an uh, impact factor uh, higher than uh, um, 1,300 uh, uh, points, then uh, we have uh, leaders for scientific uh, uh, production in uh, this area. Galeazzi is mostly orthopedic, but uh, in uh, uh, is mostly orthopedic, uh, but in the new hospital, we are uh, uh, fusing. Uh, another an additional hospital because uh, Galeazzi is a part of uh, a, the biggest uh, group for private uh, uh, the, the biggest private group in uh, in Italy for uh, health and this group is named San Donato this group uh, is uh, including uh, about 20 uh, different hospitals uh, mainly in uh, Lombardia in this region uh, and we are completely in agreement with uh, the national health system then the patients are uh, arriving and are treated uh, by national by this agreement through this agreement with the national health system 
And in new building, we have the fusion with an additional hospital, mainly devoted to cardiovascular diseases. Then our research area will, uh, will be wide, then will be wider than the present one, because uh, we will have also some other research areas, for example, in uh, for cardiovascular uh, system, for urology, for nervous system, and so on. Uh, we perform our research, uh, uh, our researchers uh, mostly in uh, uh, orthopedic, and we have uh, four different uh, areas. Uh, these uh, areas are biomechanics, uh, held by engineers, bioengineers. Uh, the second one is uh, the clinical area, the new approach for surgeries uh, in uh, classical orthopedic and uh, also in uh, vertebral surgery. The th third one is uh, the regenerative medicine, the new techniques and new approaches for uh, avoiding or for limiting or the uh, surgery. And the first, uh, the first area is uh, uh, devoted to biomarkers, biochemistry and genetics. And uh, this area is uh, uh, the area managed by Giovanni Lombardi. Uh, we are particularly interested now to uh, perform specific uh, researches on uh, biomaterials, uh, on new uh, materials and sensors uh, to uh, follow the patient uh, out of hospital after the uh, surgical intervention, because uh, now, for example, we perform uh, joint replacement uh, uh, with uh, a very short uh, uh, period in uh, hospital at uh, the fourth day after surgery the, the patient uh, if possible is uh, discharged and uh, we are developing uh, digital medicine uh, uh, procedures uh, to follow re-education of the patient then we are very interested to biomaterials and new uh, technology to uh, prevent uh, diseases uh, and to follow patients uh, after hospitalization. And uh, we are deeply involved uh, in uh, machine learning, particularly for imaging uh, techniques. Then uh, we are developing some uh, uh, researches on uh, the treatment of data, uh, data collected by phys physicians, but collected also by patients. For example, we have the uh, we have uh, three different uh, registries for uh, joint replacement and vertebral surgeries, and these registries are including uh, the data from physicians, but also the patient reported outcome measurements, and uh, we are the parallel evaluation from physicians and from patients uh, about quality of life, uh, uh, hopefully uh, improved after surgical treatment. Then uh, we are involved in international networks, uh, for example, for registries uh, with OECD health, uh, where, where we are representing our country. And uh, we are involved uh, in uh, international networks uh, for uh, European grants, for international grants. And uh, we are involved also in international societies, uh, not only in uh, orthopedics, but also in uh, some ancillary uh, research areas. Then we are very interested to cooperate with, uh, with you, with uh, your uh, universities, uh, your uh, spin-offs, and uh, your industries, uh, because uh, I uh, I'm convinced that uh, the this cooperation will be useful for us, uh, for Mind District, uh, where we will be the first inhabitants uh, next year, uh, and uh, for our city and our region. Thank you.
And uh, um, I guess this morning, this first part of the morning session was really meant to give you an overview of what is happening. This is by far the most innovative ecosystem being developed in Italy, uh, with a projection towards uh, becoming a leading player in, 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 uh, in the European environment. And we really want strongly to connect with uh, other exciting system like uh, the one that you will be presenting right after the coffee breaks. So we will have a 10 minutes break. I'm saying that for the people who are remotely connected. And then we'll come back in uh, 15 minutes and then we will listen to uh, what is uh, happening in Poland. Thank you very much.
I would I would like to welcome uh, our friends from Poland here on stage, and in particular the Polish Investment and Trade Agency, as well as Magdalena Kulcica, the director of the Chip of Poland Biotech Network. You need to teach me your name, yes. So Magda is much easier for me at the moment. Kulczycka, I do apologize for that. So please, so please uh, have a seat and thank you very much for being here. And the stage is yours, thank you. I don't have a presentation. This is a good information, I think, because it doesn't work so very. Yeah, thank you very <laughs> much for helping us to this. I was asked only uh, to, to present shortly uh, what we do. I represent uh, Polish Investment and Trade Agency, so we are like sister of Italian Trade Agency, and I think it's good to know that we are here because we have a small office in Milan, small because we are two people, me and uh, Agnieszka Czuba Minezi. We work here, and we are trying to. Um, support. This is the first step for uh, Polish companies coming in Italy, often first step, to ask us actually about everything, <laughs> to ask us to support them, to find information, to find partners, sometimes even to find uh, um, some capitals and ideas to tell them if their direction is the right one. And uh, so we need a lot of information and a lot of partners here to be able to tell them what uh, we should do together and how to continue this collaboration. So, I'll, so I'm very, very happy to hear, I was proud even to hear today that um, you already collaborate with uh, Polish uh, scientists and uh, people from Poland in general working in this sector. And I think that um, this is our strongness, that we have a lot of researchers, very good ones, very motivated people. And this market, probably Polish market, is interesting, interesting on also for this point of view. Um, our point of view, like government and state, because we represent um, our state. Now we are no more uh, part of um, Foreign Affairs Ministry. Actually, we are more independent in this moment. This idea was about to not to link us to the ministry, but more to give us some independence to work more with companies and with people on the field. Uh, so we are more linked with Ministry of Technology and Development, and it shows that development, it means this is the right place to be. And uh, I think, I hope that it will be a big start for a, a bigger collaboration, because uh, I know we are, we are in contact with many companies, and still there are more and more companies going, coming to tell us, look, we want to collaborate with Italy. We know that this is a very strong partner and we would like to be able to give them what we have and to collaborate together and uh, we know that this sector is important for our government too uh, who invest more probably is always companies but government invested 90 20 70 percent more than the year, the year before it means that it, it shows that it's important uh, in um, for the state it's important for us and especially it's important for me because i'm here and finally i find people coming asking me things and now i know that i can be in contact with for example fabio and for you and to know where to um, to make people go to talk to collaborate to find information so more in detail I think about our sector but biotechnology will explain, I think, Director Guczycka. <laughs> But um, and now for me, it's it's uh, this. It was a short introduction to tell you that we are here, like trade um, 
agency, Polish trade agency in Milan, and uh, we will be very happy to to be contacted and to have contact with you to, to know what we can present to our partners from Poland. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, so I guess we have to leave the stage to Magdalena Kulczycka. No, thank you. Uh, and the director of the Central European Bioforum Network, and I will ask her to give us an overview not only of the of the of, the, of this important event, which uh, will become even more important for us, as you will hear in a second, uh, but also about what is happening in terms of innovation uh, ecosystem in Poland. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, thank you very much uh, for possibility to present uh, see bioforum uh, as a biotech uh, network um let's see Ta -ta. where here yeah i'm pressing the button next slide please so I'm happier that I didn't have a presentation. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, well, let me start. And um, to uh, I would like to present uh, C Bioform as a network platform for biotechnology uh, companies. In, uh, in majority, and but first of all. Um, I would like to highlight, uh, talk about the, uh, the ah, thank God. All right, uh, about the biotechnology sector, uh, why it's uh, so important. Uh, I guess we all, uh, you all will agree with me that uh, nowadays, especially in the recent years, uh, we acknowledge the development of the biotechnology sector in various aspects, especially in uh, modern uh, development of modern vaccines. Uh, it wouldn't happen if there wouldn't be enough fund, uh, funding for R&D development on early stage projects. And this can be is uh, highlighted by the amount of uh, investments uh, from majority governmental funds uh, on R&D development. And you can see that in the recent years, it tripled, which is a significant number. And uh, this is appreciated and reflected as well on the amount of uh, venture capital investments uh, in the biotech sector uh, in recent years, and it is further on increased uh, increasing because uh, venture capitals recognize biotechnology uh, or life science related companies as a very attractive investment uh, targets uh, so you may ask like what is the biotech sector and uh, polish biotech sector and uh, how does it look like um i have to be frank with you that um, biotech sector, we are not the global leaders, uh, but we are very highly developing country uh, in this manner. And uh, this is reflected by the amount of uh, small enterprises being developed uh, in Poland. And uh, you can see that they consist of uh, their uh, consists of 60% of the market is uh, cover covered by small enterprises. Of course, there are as well uh, some big guys on the market like Astra, uh, Pfizer, uh, Novartis, and, recent and recently Novavax came to our market as well in order to produce their vaccines. And they're going to, they signed the contract uh, with a Polish biotech company because Poland is emerging as a very attractive place to put uh, the investments and the production uh, because we have very good uh, scientists. They're highly qualified and they're worldwide recognized uh, specialists. So people are uh, the force of the development. And this is what uh, 
is reflected also uh, in the um, distribution of the companies in Poland. You can see that uh, here are listed just few of them, obviously, uh, in order to make the slide uh, clear and visible. But you can see that the majority of the companies are located around academic centers of excellence, uh, such as uh, Warsaw, Krakow, Wrocław, Breslau, uh, and uh, Gdańsk, and of course, Poznań as well. Um, so what do we do as a networking platform, uh, as Bioforum? So we're, uh, we exist since 20 years, uh, when the biotechnology sector was in a development process. Uh, therefore, we are the most recognized uh, event in the biotechnology sector because each year we held fairs that was, uh, the fairs were organized not only in Poland, but also in the Central European countries. Uh, and at the fairs, uh, we, uh, we created this networking spot where uh, companies from the region could meet, you know, could uh, share their thoughts and uh, increase their networking uh, possibilities. And uh, therefore, and I miss, may say that we are the only biotech related uh, fairs in Poland so far. Um, what are the other actions that we uh, conduct uh, in order to enable companies to do the networking? So first of all, fairs where uh, this is the most important part and I hope you agree with me that the meeting one to one in person it's uh, something that you can't underestimate. Um, but of course, uh, and we do also smaller events such as uh, discussion panels uh, over a certain topic. Um, recently, obviously, we were doing as well uh, online meetings, uh, webinars uh, concentrated on. Uh, certain uh, life science related topics as well. Moreover, uh, we cooperate with the uh, Bioforum Association of Biotechnology Companies. That's an entity that uh, helps their members, the companies that are in the association, they, uh, the association help them in the legal and regulatory aspects as well, because driving your biotechnology product to the market, you need to meet certain requirements uh, from the reg regulatory aspects. And so um, if what we can offer to you as uh, uh, partners of uh, C Bioforum. So we provide uh, expertise on Polish biotech market. So whenever you're looking for a certain partner for your business, for your project, feel free to contact us so we can organize, for example, dedicated event where you can find uh, partners you're looking for, where you can say what you are looking for. And uh, we can also uh, help you in promotion of your company. Uh, and we also represent uh, Polish companies. On the other hand, we also represent Polish companies at the international fairs, such as CPHI. Um, we also, uh, at the fairs, we also um, highlight the outstanding companies that are the, uh, that are you know the the uh, give the force of the development of the biotech sector in Poland, and we appreciate them with uh, C Bioform Award. So speaking of fairs, I would like you to take invitation uh, for the fairs in, that will take place physically in May 2022 uh, in Warsaw. And this will be our Jubilee edition, 20th already. So uh, I hope you will have a chance to come and uh, meet uh, various players uh, from Poland, uh, starting from 
uh, academia, uh, acad research institutions, uh, go through startups or small enterprises, and uh, having as well uh, CRO companies f that are uh, operating in Poland. Uh, having said that, uh, I'm happy to uh, answer some questions and feel free to contact me. So. Thank you, Magda. And I would like to add a couple of things to this last uh, um, invitation you made for the, for the uh, event uh, that is going to happen next spring. Uh, there is already um, an initial uh, intention, and we will somehow um, uh, formalize this in, in the upcoming weeks about the uh, organizers of the event today. Uh, so the city of Milano, Landley's uh, hospital, and and and, and Biofor Dreams to to be uh, um, to play an active role in this operation. So we want to create a network, and we will do that, of course, also in collaboration with the trade agency, to have uh, companies from our ecosystem, which is not only here in Milan, but is throughout uh, uh, Italy, to, to come. To come, and as you mentioned, it's a mixture of companies, academia, research center, and we want those connections to happen. So that's going to be the step number one. Step number two is that uh, we are thinking to take this a bit further. And, uh, and the reason for that is because there is a, a clear need from the market to um, look at innovative projects. Uh, but there is also a big issue when it comes to uh, somehow going above that, that minimum threshold of attention which uh, uh, Eastern European countries and Italy for that matter uh, uh, play or are characterized by. Uh, basically, we are not on the radar of the scouting uh, activities of major farmers and we're not on the radar because we are too much fragmented and many times we don't go in a coordinated fashion, which is what we want to avoid. So uh, one of the things that we're planning to do is uh, Biomatch, a, reg a um, regular uh, webinar on dedicated uh, topics of interest with uh, uh, some clear indication on the thresholds, for example. So the only companies that are present on the market can present and do activities. But in order to create those connection points uh, with the industry, which is on the other side. And we will bring to those tables federated innovation that was presented before, innovation circle, which was presented before. So all of these uh, stakeholders that are supporting the innovation ecosystem in the early stages, in particular in biotech pharma, but not only in biotech pharma field. As uh, Stefano mentioned today, there are over 11 different thematic areas in, in, uh, in federated innovation, which we want to uh, uh, somehow support into this bridging game. So I, I thank very much, Magda, for this opportunity, and we look forward to create a very nice SEBIO forum in the spring. And uh, uh, I ha do have a technical information. Now we will stop for, uh, for lunch and a little bit of sightseeing around. Hopefully there's a good weather. We'll come back here not at 2 o'clock, but at 1 o'clock. And we will have a, I'm saying that in particular for the, for the people uh, that are connected. And we'll have uh, uh, some short presentation of the companies that we have connected. i say that for you here. We have connected the uh, different peoples from ecosystems. We have uh, ventures. We have uh, industry. People who want to listen. And so make sure, and I say that to the Polish company, to make clear your addresses and your contacts so they can get in contact with you uh, in the near future if there is opportunities for business. Thank you very much, and thank you for this morning session. And uh, we look forward to have you here in one hour. Bye-bye.